program is brought to you in living color on WNBC TV. Because nowadays, if anybody says that they are leaders, they must have the courage and the guts to take a stand and not equivocate and not straddle consistently and persistently. If not, you have no right to leadership. How do you feel being the first black woman, you know, in the House of Representatives? I have mixed feelings. First of all, I'm very glad to have been able to make history in this country by being the first black woman. And boys and girls, as far as I'm concerned, actually, it's overdue, so I don't get terribly excited about it. I am a people's politician. I have emerged in America as a new breed of politician, a new kind of politician. Whether I will survive or not will depend on the people. I mean that. Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm doesn't play by the rules. She has endorsed Mayor Lindsay for re-election, turning her back on the Democratic candidate, despite her position as New York's Democratic National Committee woman. As a freshman member of the House of Representatives, Mrs. Chisholm defied tradition by refusing assignment to the Agriculture Committee, telling the powerful leaders of the House that the work of that committee was irrelevant to the needs of her constituency. Her community is the 12th Congressional District of Brooklyn, which includes the predominantly black, predominantly poor neighborhood of Bedford-Stuyvesant. Her actions have won her many names, Pepper Pot, a rebel, a lady Adam Clayton Powell, a black Robert Kennedy. She has the distinction of being the first black woman elected to the United States Congress. Well, if they want to, Vince, if they want to open up a real political battle in New York State, this is the way, so let them try. They'll, be, they'll, they'll have to sit down and think. So if they want to take it away from me, this is, I'm just the person for them to touch. Because our, because our party has got to recognize that this is a new era, Vince. Mrs. Chisholm is 44 years old, 5 feet 3, weighs 103 pounds. She boasts a near genius IQ. Mm -hmm. What is always most in evidence about her is her energy, drive, and gregariousness. In Washington, a staff of six helps her maintain her breakneck pace. As the first black woman in Congress, she has become a national as well as a local representative. Her schedule is crowded with appointments, meetings, and telephone calls. Uh, you, you know, you've known me for a number of years. You know that I have never been exactly a favorite of the party. And, you know, I do what my conscience tells me to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that, Vince. I always know that. But you can also remind people that Franklin Roosevelt, who was president, supported Mayor LaGuardia, who was the Republican candidate for mayor. And I never heard of anyone saying we should kick President Roosevelt out of the Democratic Party, which is yes. probably just as well for the Democratic Party. Well, there are quite a number of things that... Mrs. Chisholm's day takes her back and forth between the Longworth House office building and the Capitol. In the House, she is one of nine black representatives. She already has a potential book of anecdotes about her encounters with some of her conservative Southern colleagues, but right now she's too involved in the business of the House to tattletale the stories publicly. Suffice it to say, she has shocked not a few with the directness of her language and dealings. The trip to the Capitol for roll call votes sometimes results in spontaneous conferences with colleagues. This day with New York Representative Allard Lowenstein, the man probably most responsible for starting the Dump Johnson movement in 1968. Well, that's what makes people admire you, is the fact that you do what you think is right. Yes, and... If people in public life did that more, we'd be better off. Right. And I think, too, that... Mrs. Chisholm has already co-sponsored several bills, including one to repeal Social Security provisions, limiting the number of children who can receive welfare payments, Another to make nationwide New York's SEEK program, enabling minority group students with low aptitudes to enter college. Still another of her bills would abolish the draft. Not surprisingly, her political stance pleases neither the right nor the militant left. Black militants who will call me an Aunt Jemima or Uncle Tom have reasons for doing so. There are groups in a society when you do not accept their approaches or their solutions or their program, the easiest thing for anybody to do is to label you. I'm not concerned 
about labels. I am concerned about what my behavior and my actions indicate to the masses of black people in this country and also what my behavior indicates to the whites in this country. I see myself as a potential reconciler on the American scene. Time will tell whether or not this will be so. Removed as a bargaining point or not? Yes, I think it should be removed as a bargaining point. Okay, yes, so with Wally. Mm -hmm. yeah, see Wally. Right. All right. Now, in addition... Shirley Downs is Mrs. Chisholm's legislative assistant. Here with her staff, Mrs. Chisholm is a very warm and outgoing person. And she's very accessible. Uh, although she's very much of a lady, she's not uh, reserved in the sense of ever being cold or cutting you off. It's always a very warm exchange. When I say hardworking, I really mean that. She comes in, she's here all day, she's pretty organized. And she also takes home, homework every night. <laughs> the briefcase is sometimes uh, heavier than she is. I think Mrs. Chisholm's style uh, unhinges an awful lot of other members of Congress. She is very independent-minded, and I think it's one of the reasons that she has such rapport with people, is that a lot of people are frustrated, and I'm not just talking about uh, blacks or students or new left types at all. They're saying, you know, we don't like the way the system runs, and we want people to stand up and say, no, she does that, and I think that's why people respond to her. Mississippi Democratic Party. All right, then. All right, that's going to be in Mississippi. In Mississippi, right. That's on a Sunday. Lewis Fisher is the press and appointment secretary. A one-time migrant worker, Fisher gained experience for his Washington job working in the anti-poverty program. He is the only man in the office. One of the major lacks in the country is honesty not only in terms of our public figures and, and our public agencies, but just you know, individual, man-to-man, -man, you know, woman-to-woman, person-to-person, honesty, you know, facing the situation as it is, not, not mealy-mouthing about it. And Shirley Chisholm is that kind of person. I mean, she tells it where it's at. And she looks at a situation and she judges it pragmatically, yes, but she also approaches it on, a, on an emotional, on a human level. And the two things combined in, in, in one individual is just, well, it's a happening. Home to Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm is the Bedford-Stuyvesant section of Brooklyn. Her district is 70% black and Puerto Rican and 30% white and includes parts of Greenpoint, Bushwick, Crown Heights, and Williamsburg. Shirley Chisholm was born here in Bedford-Stuyvesant, the daughter of an unskilled laborer. At the age of three, she was sent to Barbados in the Caribbean to live with her grandmother while her mother worked in New York to earn enough to educate Shirley and three sisters. Mrs. Chisholm returned to Brooklyn when she was 10. She was a top student in the Brooklyn public schools. On graduation, she won a scholarship to Brooklyn College and later received a master's degree in teaching from Columbia. She worked as a kindergarten teacher and got into politics as a result of active community work. After serving four years in the state assembly, Mrs. Chisholm entered the race for Congress. She first had to win a primary, defeating two opponents, then took on James Farmer, former national director of Corps, now assistant secretary for administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. Few believe that a woman known only to her district stood a chance against a man of national prominence. Column A or D, so we can do something for this community. Thank you, madam. I hope you're going to vote for me November 5th. Column A or column D? My name is Shirley Chisholm. On the basis of the record that I have established, I hope to go to the United States Congress on November 5th. Hello there. Please vote for me now. November 5th. Column A or D? I'm asking all of the good people of this community who first emerged me in the political arena some four years ago to make a last big push on November 5th. Send me to the United States Congress. With her victory, she won not only a seat in Congress, but a place in history.
When in New York, as in Washington, Mrs. Chisholm keeps the same relentless pace of appointments, meeting with people and addressing community groups. Her activities sometimes bring her into some unusual situations. This day, she addressed a graduation of the Bedford-Stuyvesant Unwed Mothers Program that provides education for girls who have had to drop out of school because of pregnancy. My good friends, it is so wonderful to be able to come back to Bed-Stuy and to just pay a brief visit. You know, I live most of the time now in Washington, D.C., and although I'm not here, I'm constantly thinking of you, the people, you, the people who made it possible for me to become the first black woman to be elected to the United States Congress, and also very, very proud of the fact that I am now your voice in Washington, D.C. <laughs> I came from a family, girls, where my mother was a seamstress and my father was an unskilled laborer and there were four girls in the family. We had no boys in our family. And at one time, I can remember my family was so poor that during the Depression years, we had to go on public assistance and I was such a proud child. I remember so well that when we received our monthly allotment of clothes and I would wear my dress to school in the morning, mother could never get me to return to school in the afternoon because I was so proud and the children were so cruel and they laughed at the way the dresses hung on my slender frame. Girls, I say this to you this evening to let you know that I was not born with a brass spoon in my mouth. Because sometimes people feel that because you've reached a certain position in life, you've had it easy. And I want to tell you that in spite of what you may be feeling this evening, in spite of what your past may have been, look forward, look to the future, because you're young. You have so many wonderful years ahead of you. It is said that behind every great man, there is a great woman. Behind Shirley Chisholm is Conrad Chisholm, an investigator for the City Bureau of Medical Services. The Chisholms have been married for 19 years. They have no children. Mr. Chisholm was asked to describe his wife. <laughs> well, I tell you, uh, I remember once she was introduced at a dinner uh, by the MC and it was very fitting to me that he introduced her as 100 pounds of nuclear energy and I think that is very appropriate. Well, I would describe my husband as 200 pounds of patience. My husband is a very remarkable person. I could truthfully say that I would not have been able to reach the top unless I had a very understanding mate. And indeed, I know it has been most difficult on him occasionally. Well, I've had to sacrifice quite a bit, but I enjoy sacrificing it for what she is doing. She's trying to do a very important job for all people in America. It's one of those things that, uh, from I met her, she has been working very hard for people. For relaxation, I love to dance. I can never get enough time to read. We have a lovely big library upstairs. I read all kinds of books and I play the piano and uh, I love to write poetry. Uh, in fact, I have a few of my poems here. Would you like me to read one or two? Uh, Land of our birth. Tell us in words, simple and plain, the reason for all of our torture and pain. Are we not part of this nation strong? For what have we done that is so wrong? 
land of our birth, tell us by deeds, sincere and true, the reason we are not really part of the crew. Did we not sacrifice and hope not in vain to be assured that there would be equal gain? Land of our birth, tell us in song, hearty and loud, amidst the singing, jostling crowd, that we are all citizens of your realm and that you are captain at the helm. Land of our birth, the time has come for action fast. We can no longer live in the past. This mighty land, the powerful and free, must now demonstrate the real democracy. Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm is a leader of many themes, themes she keeps returning to in her words and in her actions, that she is a people's politician, that she tells it like it is, and her repeated message to the young people to get a good education. On her calendar of regularly scheduled appointments is a recording session in the House Recording Studios of a weekly broadcast for New York City. Stand back, please. Boys and girls, this is Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm bringing a very brief message to you. In today's world, it is very necessary for you to have an academic or a good business education. There's no room any longer in this society, boys and girls, for unskilled people. From time to time, there will be obstacles in your path, and perhaps you might, might want to give up. But remember one thing, only weaklings give up in the face of obstacles. I say this to you, boys and girls, because it is so important for you to recognize that you must study hard and you must apply yourselves. Be sure that you have a balanced diet of fun and studies. Sometimes young people tend to indulge in practically nothing but fun. In today's society, fun would not help you to get out in the economic midstream of American life. If Shirley Chisholm is responsive to the young, so also have they been to her. This summer, she worked with a group of interns, college students who learn how government functions by working in her office. Janet Edmondson was one of them. There is such a difference between Mrs. Chisholm's office and so many of the other congressional offices and Senate offices. I know many of the interns that are in Washington this summer have been really disappointed. I mean, it's very hard when you come to Washington, you see how busy everyone is, you see how the bureaucracy seems to have taken over. You see one small thing and then another small thing, a, a small lie that someone has to tell, telling people to come in the office that, you know, the senator is out when he's standing right behind you. And naturally, there is a credibility gap. But it's just so amazing to find someone that really cares, that is really in contact with the people. I mean, I really believe that Mrs. Chisholm doesn't even care if she gets elected next time. She does things strictly because of what she believes in. My reaction to Congress is that Congress moves too slowly. We have been dealing more with the problems pertaining to the military and the defense and the space and other planets. We've been doing everything except really looking specifically at the problems on planet Earth. I'll never forget coming into this office. And I caught Mrs. Chisholm talking to Shirley Downs, the legislative assistant. And they were talking about uh, some congressman that had put her name on a bill that she had not discussed with him. And her eyes just lit up and she looked at me and she said, Do you know what he is? He's a boss. A party boss. And there was just this absolute, you know, antagonism toward that man. And it was just fantastic. I mean, she really cares. And she's really where it's at. Oh, there's so many things in the Congress I would like to change. I think the thing that I'd like to change more than anything else is the seniority system. The destiny of this country, which is primarily a young country, primarily peopled by younger people as a whole, is in the hands of about 15 men in the Congress who are there as chairmen of powerful committees, but they receive these chairmanships due to the length of tenure in their offices from their particular states. Has nothing to do with capacity, intellect, or ability. It's just by virtue of the number of years. And many of these men are senile, 
many of them, uh, there's some question as to their ability to chair a committee. And 90% of them are from the South. The country is ruled by a group of old men that make up the Southern oligarchy. That's why this country is at its, as it is. For young people I know, it makes young people want to come and work for her, even work for her with no salary at all, just because she's on the level, just because you know where she stands on every issue. You can't agree with her on every issue, but you know where she stands. I have no reason to be for Shirley Chisholm or against Shirley Chisholm. I mean, I come from the West Coast. I'm from Yakima, Washington. But she is one of a handful, and I mean a handful of like two or three people in the Congress that are really for the people, that have dedicated themselves to the people. Despite her criticism of Congress, she's already won respect. Assistant Majority Leader Hale Boggs of Louisiana. I've been very much impressed with Ms. Chisholm. I find her to be a, a woman of uh, strong convictions. I find her to be very articulate. I think she uh, represents a district. She does it ably and aggressively. And as a matter of fact, she has a distinction of being the only person, in my knowledge, who uh, defeated the Committee on Committees. I think it uh, impressed everybody in the House that he was a Negro member and a Negro woman, the first ever elected in the history, who was able to take over the Speaker, the Majority Leader, the Majority Whip, and everybody and beat him. Good afternoon, boys and girls. I certainly indeed welcome you to Washington. I hope you had a wonderful time. Never did I dream that I would have had the opportunity to become a representative. I want to say to you forever that there are all kinds of opportunities that are now available to you, but the most important thing is that you have to be prepared in order to be able to meet the problems of the future. And the most important thing about being prepared is to be able to get, go to school and get a very good education. In today's world, you cannot make it in this society unless you have an education. So you must make the most of your educational opportunities because you don't know, maybe I have a future senator or future state assemblyman or maybe a future congresswoman in this group listening to me. Do you plan to run for senator? The young man wants to know if I plan to run for senator. Boys and girls, all I'm interested now in is being a good congressman. If the people of New York State should deem someday that I should run for the Senate, here in the United States Congress, I will run. It would be my hope that with God's help and the people's help, that maybe someday I might be able to hold the seat that the late Senator Robert F. Kennedy held in New York, being the first black woman also to come to the United States Senate. We shall see what the people decide to do with me in the future. Time will tell what lies in store for the irrepressible Shirley Chisholm. This is Bill Ryan for New York Illustrated.